Hi there. Now, one of the common questions I get asked when it comes to working with frequency tables is handling notation like this or this. What does it mean? How do we find class widths? How do we find midpoints? We're going to need these values when it comes to working out the mean or standard deviation from a frequency table. Well, that's what I want to address then in this video. So you'll notice I've got here a table of values. Let's say for the height h measured in centimeters for say some students. And you'll notice with this table I've got here no gaps. There's no gaps between moving from one interval into the next interval. You can see I've got the 175 here and it goes straight into the 175 there. And the same with 180 and 180 here. Whereas in this table, I've got gaps. We've got a gap of one unit going from the 174 to the 175. And the same with the 179 to the 180. So there is a difference here. And how do we handle them? What do they mean? Well, for this first table here, let's show you. What it means is that the height h is always greater than or equal to the lower bound. And the lower bound are these values that we've got here when there's no gaps. And the upper bound is always less than this number that you've got at the end here, as you can see in this table here. However, when we've got gaps, in this example, the gaps are one unit between, say, the 174 and the 175. Same with 179 to 180. So what we do is we need to fill those gaps. So we go halfway across the one unit. And this is what we get. So if we take this second interval here, notice how I've dropped back half a unit to 174.5. H is greater than or equal to that lower bound, but I've increased the 179 by half a unit up to 179.5. So that when I move into this next interval, I start with my lower bound at 179.5. But notice how it doesn't end at 189, it goes up by half a unit to 189.5. And the same at the start here. Notice it's not 170. I've gone back down half a unit. So hopefully you can see then what this representation means. Now, when it comes to working out class widths, for this first table here, you can see that the class width is always the lower bound taken away from the upper bound difference between 170 and 175, which is 5. Similarly, 175 to 180 is 5, but for this one, the class width is 10 units. Now, one of the common mistakes that are made is the class width when you've got tables like this. It's very tempting to think the class width then is 174, take away 170, giving us a class width of 4 but it's not. It's the difference between 174.5 and the 169.5, which is five units. So when it comes to working out the class widths here, then we get these results. And you'll be called upon to work out class widths when you're drawing histograms. Remember, frequency density will be frequency divided by the class width. Another thing you'll be called upon to work out when it comes to working out the mean or standard deviation is the midpoint of your class intervals. So I've got a table here which gives us the midpoints then for this set of values here. All we need to do is just add together our lower and upper bounds for the interval and divide by 2. So 170 plus 175 divided by 2 gives us 172.5.
and you can check out the other results here. Now for this second set of class intervals here, when it comes to the midpoints of these, again what we would do is add together the lower and upper bounds and then divide by 2 and you'll get these results. You could argue though that because of the symmetry that you're decreasing the 170 for instance by half a unit but at the same time increasing the 174 by half a unit you'd get exactly the same answers if you just added together these two values not that they're the lower and upper bounds add them together and divide by 2 you'll get 172 and check out the last one adding together 180 and 189 and dividing by 2 will give you 184.5. So you're going to get exactly the same results here whether you use these values or the values that you've got here. It's the class width that is dependent on your upper and lower bounds. So I hope that's given you some idea then now on this type of notation that we get and how we can interpret it.